Hold your ground events and horror shooters are my bread and butter. I loved the Gears of War series for its horde mode and spent a ton of time playing it. I had fond memories of Left 4 Dead as well. When it comes to Resident Evil though, I feel like there is one scene that sort of defines Hold Your Ground events for the series. For me, the most noble area was the cabin fight in Resident Evil 4. Now in a previous video, we covered that concept in its entirety. We escaped the cabin and showcased all the weird things that can occur when you do so. But now it is time to do that in a modern sense, which brings us to the hospital fight in Resident Evil 3. This particular event feels a lot more like an arcade shooter than the rest of the game simply because zombies seem to drop a bit easier and they also explode into blood. But what if we're able to actually get outside of the hospital while this event was going on? What kind of crazy things will occur? Well, let's find out. So first and foremost, we need to talk about something. Resident Evil 3's remake handles environments a lot differently than Resident Evil 4. Resident Evil 4 tends to use isolated, separate maps that load each and every time you go through a door. The Resident Evil 3 remake dynamically loads and unloads areas as we leave them though, so the immersion of leaving one area and entering another is usually not disrupted by a loading screen. This makes Resident Evil 3 feel like you aren't really ever safe, whereas in Resident Evil 4, I knew if I went through a loading door, anything pursuing me no longer could. However, this dynamic loading and unloading changes the hospital fight completely when compared to the cabin fight in Resident Evil 4. The game is constantly removing assets that you just left behind in order to keep the game running smoothly and to not bog it down. So when we're presented with the hospital fight, it leads to some really crazy scenarios. So let's rewind for a moment to the point where we give Jill the vaccine. At this moment, when Carlos goes to leave the room, there's typically a cutscene where he starts blocking up all the doors. The truth is, the doors are already blocked up, and if we bypass through this door, the onslaught never starts. If we clip outside the hospital, we can actually start slaying all the zombies before the horde actually arrives. They don't even know how to react and just get mowed down. But stepping outside the hospital actually causes the hospital's interior to unload completely. Stepping back inside doesn't fix it either. There's a way to restore it, but I'll get to that in a second. While we're out here, we can explore the vast city area that we never get to actually go through. Resident Evil 3 just kind of warps Carlos from the police station to the hospital, despite being pretty much across the city. He picks up Jill and then just sort of arrives. So running around this environment is pretty cool, seeing as we never get to actually be over here. There's a lot of low poly cars that are normally obscured by fog, and the area seems to go on for quite a while. Heading back to the hospital though, we're presented with a unique problem. Regardless of how we enter the front of the hospital, the interior fails to load. It's just this giant void. So in order to solve this, we actually need to run behind the hospital and guess as to where the rooms are. When we are in close proximity, a room can load from the interior. Once the room is loaded, the rest of the rooms will begin to sort of dynamically load around us. It's a bit broken, but we can use how the game renders areas to restore the interior of the hospital lobby again by backtracking. Now that we're back in the lobby and there are no enemies, we can now actually start the intro sequence to the fights by touching the door properly. However, we've basically broken some game logic by doing this. All the first enemies that we normally encounter have already been defeated, and because we stepped outside, the enemies are unloaded. The front door is being hit over and over again by zombies that don't exist. As time goes on, zombies begin to respawn and populate the map though, and this is when something interesting happens. If we step outside while the zombies are climbing inside, the interior of the level unloads, so the zombies begin slow falling through the floor. As this was happening, I was shooting them, but I then realized I should try to see what happens if they fall. With the interior unloaded, zombies can't enter the building again, so I had to reload the interior by making my way to the back of the hospital again and finding my way out. I then repeat my actions so I could watch a zombie fall into the void. It was super creepy and slow. So zombies appear to have this weird falling mechanic where they can only fall so far before hitting an automatic surface, before standing back up to fall again. These zombies essentially just fell over and over again. But by this point, the clock had already been running for quite a while, so I knew the Hunter Betas would begin their descent. That's when I looked up and I saw one just chilling outside where the upper window of the hospital would be. Again, since the hospital interior was unloaded, the breakable window was gone so this hunter had no idea what it was supposed to do. It just sat there floating. If you were to unload fire onto it, it would actually be invincible too because it never finished its spawning animation. At this point, we can retreat back to the hospital and come back out, and every unloaded enemy loads in, except they are free fall again. All the zombies slowly descend into the darkness. Because they don't actually die, they aren't capable of respawning. And the game won't add new zombies because it has to keep tabs on the amount of objects in the scene, otherwise the game would slow down. Upon stepping back inside, the cutscene will immediately play for all the zombies breaking through. 
This resets the room, so all the enemies are pulled back inside of it. After some more unloading and loading magic, we can free the entire area of zombies and eliminate the two hunter betas, leaving absolutely no enemies at all. We just have a bunch of zombies slowly descending forever. But now, let's shake things up a bit. Carlos steps out, and Jill steps in, with a second Jill still recovering. I wanted to take another stab at the sequence while trying some other things, so we're presented with Jill being conformed to the 3D rigging of Carlos while administering the vaccine to the other Jill. The same cutscenes take place that normally do when Carlos is present, so upon stepping out, we have the Carlos Jill setting up the blockade in front of the door. I primarily went through the same setups as before, but this time I wanted to see what would happen if the enemies left the main lobby. Before, I mentioned that even if you unload the main lobby, the enemies outside still won't know how to get inside. Furthermore, the enemies that were inside unloaded with the lobby. So the trick for this is to actually approach the back half of the hospital so that the lobby and certain enemy models load in, without the supply room behind the lobby desk loading in. We can actually watch the enemies assemble themselves once they get into loading range, which is kind of creepy. But what this does is basically create a ledge in the room and a never-ending cliff. It was super satisfying watching hordes and hordes of zombies actually fall into the void in real time. It wasn't super slow like before, because the enemies weren't tricked into landing onto a place where there wasn't any ground. There's an edge that they are walking over, so a falling animation is triggered. Over and over again they fell, and eventually the Hunter Beta turned around to notice me. However, Hunter Betas don't have falling animations like a zombie does, because they only appear in certain areas, so they are capable of walking straight out into the void. They were swinging at me and falling me out into no man's land for a while, before one of them used their jump attack. The problem is, once they leave the invisible floor, they can't return to it. So their jump attack never lands, as they fall way below the stage. At some point, the game checks where they are going, and puts flooring beneath them similar to the first zombies we made fall out of the windows. At that point, they just sit in their idle animation, and if we shoot them, they die as usual. With this, there was really only one last thing to do with this area, at least for the sake of this video. And that was to get to the hospital early with Jill, before anything started taking place in the game. Doing so presents us with a hospital that is completely abandoned. Normally, there are zombies here that we need to dispose of, but when accessing this area like this, it's completely empty. There's no surprise hunter beta attacks, no undead staff, nothing at all. It's kind of weird experiencing this way but also pretty neat. But with that, we've completed our rounds in the hospital. I hope you enjoyed this weird look at this iconic scene from this game. Thanks for watching guys and gals, and I'll see all of you again really soon on Horoscopes. Cheers.